everyone. Going to take a little bit of time in this video to go over the handout on useful words for grammar and mechanics. Um, it's sort of a uh, an introduction to these mini lessons. We're not going to necessarily learn about any specific type of grammar and mechanics error here in this video, uh, but this will provide a pretty solid foundation for you as you move forward and learn about some specific errors and how to fix them. Because we don't often think about grammar and mechanics, and we don't really think about different categories of words and how they function within the English language. That's what I want to do here because it will come in pretty handy. We're going to look at three groups of words. Coordinating conjunctions, first one. Subordinating conjunctions and conjunctive adverbs. All right, so coordinating conjunctions. There are seven of them and, but, or, for, nor, so, and yet. What these words do is they connect grammatically equal items or they connect parts of words, phrases, and clauses that are alike. You can begin a sentence with a coordinating conjunction, or you can combine sentences by using a comma and a conjunction. Right? So we'll just take a look at some examples and then I'll come back to that statement. <laughs> All right, so we have here Jen studied hard for the test, comma, and it paid off. You can see how these two ideas, how to study hard for the test and how it paid off, are connected and equal. Neither of those ideas is more important than the other. They are equal in importance. They build, they, they one follows the next. So it makes sense to have them connected using a comma with a coordinating conjunction that shows that they are connected and equal. You have to make sure that you're using the correct coordinating conjunction though, because that sentence wouldn't really make any sense if we had said, Jim studied hard for the test, comma, but it paid off. Because the word but as a coordinating conjunction implies a contrast or a shift of thought. It goes against expectation. And that's not what's happening here in this sentence. It, he studied hard for the test and it paid off. We want to make sure we're using the correct coordinating conjunction. What's interesting is I'm going to kind of type this in here so you can see what I mean. We could have done this. Jim studied hard for the test, period, and it paid off. Now, some of you may have learned that you are not supposed to begin a sentence with these types of words, with coordinating conjunction. You can't start a sentence with the word and. You can't start a sentence with the word but. You can't start a sentence with the word so. That's not actually true. You can. The reason that many of us are taught that you cannot begin a sentence with one of those words, two reasons. First, it might not seem as academically elevated, but it's okay. The biggest reason, I believe, <laughs> is that it is so easy to do it incorrectly that a lot of teachers just say, you can't do it at all. Because it is very easy to do this wrong starting a sentence with a coordinating conjunction. Like, what if I typed this? Um, I 
that Jim studied hard for the test, period, and ate a big breakfast. That is when starting the sentence with the word and doesn't work. But it's not because you started it with that coordinating conjunction. It's because you ended up with a sentence fragment. There's no, there's no subject in this sentence anymore. And ate a big breakfast. Who ate a big breakfast? Jim did, but Jim's over here in this sentence. We didn't refer to him in this one. So that's one reason why we're taught not to start a sentence with a coordinating conjunction, because it's too easy to mess that sentence up. <laughs> but technically speaking, this right here is grammatically acceptable. What we want to do, though, is work on using these coordinating conjunctions with a comma to combine equal ideas. Jim studied hard for the test. It paid off. Those are two separate sentences, but they are equal and they are connected. How do we connect them in a grammatically acceptable way that shows their connection? We use a comma with a coordinating conjunction, and we ensure that we have chosen the right coordinating conjunction. Jim studied hard for the test, comma, and it paid off. We have other examples here. Connor ate a lot of turkey. <laughs> Connor ate a lot of turkey for lunch, comma, but he managed to devour a whole chicken for dinner. Or we could go out to dinner, comma, or we could stay home and order pizza. I have not, I have not been asked to resign, comma, nor do I intend to do so. I can't meet you for lunch today, comma, for I have already made other plans. Just so you know, you're looking here. For as a coordinating conjunction functions the same way that the word because does. You can express the same idea that you would with the word because, but in a way that allows you to combine sentences and combine ideas differently. The word because falls under this category of words that we're going to learn about next, subordinating conjunction. So if you're wanting coordinating conjunctions, if you're wanting to combine full sentences, two complete sentences, in a grammatically correct way, and the relationship between the two is one that is like a cause effect, you can use the coordinating conjunction for, so that you have two complete sentences of equal importance connected together in a grammatically correct way. All right. So I can't meet you for I can't meet you for lunch today. For I have already made other plans. Or my internet was down, comma, so I wasn't able to watch Netflix. Her advice seems strange, comma. Yet I believe she is right. So when you have two or more complete sentences that you want to keep connected because they are of equal importance, you can use a comma with a coordinating conjunction. There are other ways that we can show relationships among our thoughts, though. That leads us to our next group of words, subordinating conjunctions. Subordinating conjunctions take a complete idea 
a complete thought, a complete sentence, and turns it into a dependent clause. It can no longer stand on its own. It has to be connected to a complete sentence. Up here with the coordinating conjunction, we didn't have to keep the sentences connected. Like I showed you, you could put a period here after test and capitalize the A in and. It would still be grammatically correct. We simply wanted to have these ideas combined in one single sentence. So we decided we could use the comma with the coordinating conjunction to do so. Down here with subordinating conjunction, once you use one of these types of words, you no longer have two complete sentences that you could leave by themselves separate. If you've used a subordinating conjunction, whatever sentence you have that subordinating conjunction in has to be attached to a complete sentence. So let's look here. Don't show up for my Halloween party unless you're wearing a costume. Don't show up for my Halloween party. That is a complete sentence. It's a command. <laughs> this right here, unless you're wearing a costume, it is not a complete sentence anymore. This word, the word unless is a subordinating conjunction. Since we have used that word, we have turned this sentence into a dependent clause. Dependent. It depends on something stronger. It depends on a complete sentence. It cannot stand by itself. It has to be connected to a complete sentence. So we could fix this one of two ways. We can leave the ideas in the exact same order they were here in the original version, but simply do it in a grammatically correct way. Don't show up for my Halloween party unless you're wearing a costume, right? Keep it all the same. We could switch the order. Unless you're wearing a costume, comma, don't show up for my Halloween party. You'll notice if the dependent clause comes second, like it does here, you don't need a comma. Don't show up for my Halloween party unless you're wearing a costume. But if we put the dependent clause first, we do need a comma. Unless you're wearing a costume, don't show up for my Halloween party. We have a few more examples too. Jim did well on the test because he studied hard. The word because is a subordinating conjunction. It has turned that sentence into a dependent clause that is not allowed to stand on its own. It must be connected to something stronger. Jim did well on the test because he studied hard. We could switch the order here too. Because he studied hard, comma, Jim did well on the test. This might be another one of those situations where you're looking at this and you're like, wait a minute, I was told you can never begin a sentence with the word because. This is another one of those instances where we were probably told that simply because we very rarely did it right. <laughs> it's too easy to end up with this up here, especially if we put it at the beginning of the sentence. It's too easy to end up with, because he studied hard, period, Jim did well on the test. It is okay to begin a sentence with a subordinating conjunction, like the word because, as long as you make sure that it is connected to the deep, the independent clause, the complete sentence, right? And again, 
If the dependent clause comes second, no comma is required. If the dependent clause comes first, then a comma is required. Another example, I could tell he was having a good time, although he never said so. The word although is a subordinating conjunction. It has turned this idea into a dependent clause. It needs to be connected to something stronger. I could tell he was having a good time, although he never said so. We could switch the order. Although he never said so, I could tell he was having a good time. All right, There's a couple more examples there for you. We've got the word if and the word while. I just want to go back up to the list, though, so that we can point out how common subordinating conjunctions are, right? After, although, as, as soon as, because, before, by the time, even if, even though, every time, if, in case, in the event that, just in case, now that, once, only if, since, though, unless, until, when, whenever, whereas, whether or not, while, those words, we use them so often to show the relationships among our ideas. It is crucial that you understand how these words function in terms of sentence structure. That when you use one of these words or phrases, you have turned that thought into a dependent clause and it has to be connected to a complete sentence. It is no longer a complete sentence on its own once you've used a subordinating conjunction. That's not to scare you away from using them. Use them. They, again, we, we use so many of these words on a regular basis. We don't want to stop doing that. Um, you just want to make sure that you're aware of how to do it correctly. So my my advice to most students is this. A good rule to follow is this. Anytime you use a subordinating conjunction, check to make sure that the, that dependent clause is correctly connected to an independent clause. Anytime you use one of these words, especially the really common one, right? Because, although, before, if, though, uh, whereas, while, until, when, I mean, so many of these, super common. Anytime you use one of those, go check to make sure that you haven't ended up with this, right? That you have either ended up with this or this. <laughs> that you have connected it to a complete sentence, right? Okay. Our last group of words are what we call conjunctive adverbs. So these are very similar to coordinating conjunctions in that they are used to show the relationships among complete sentences. Remember, we had Jim studied hard for the test, period, and it paid off. So it could stand, the, the coordinating conjunction and, if used correctly, could begin the second sentence of that thought process. But we also can use the comma to help combine the two sentences with that coordinating conjunction. Jim studied hard for the test, comma, and it paid off. The way that conjunctive adverbs are similar to coordinating conjunctions is that they can stand on their own. If you do it correctly, you can begin a sentence with a coordinating conjunction like the word and, and if you do it correctly, you can begin a sentence with a conjunctive adverb like however. Where they differ though is how you combine the complete sentences. With a coordinating conjunction, all you need is a comma. 
That is not the case with conjunctive adverbs. It's you have more complex ideas when you're using conjunctive adverbs, a, a more complex relationship among the ideas that you're expressing. So you need more than the comma. Now, conjunctive adverbs allow us to connect two complete or independent clauses. They are often used with a semicolon, um, but not always. You just want to make sure that you have positioned it correctly and that you understand that you are dealing with two complete sentences. So we have some examples here. Tim wanted to dance the jive, semicolon. However, Eileen wanted to dance the polka. Tim wanted to dance the jive, period. However, Eileen wanted to dance the polka. Tim wanted to dance the jive, semicolon. Eileen, however, wanted to dance the polka. And then you could make it to separate sentences. Tim wanted to dance the jive, period. Eileen, however, wanted to dance the polka. So what we have here is two separate sentences. Tim wanted to dance the jive. However, Eileen wanted to dance the polka. In this version, we can keep those two independent clauses connected with that semicolon. We could just make them two separate sentences. Put a period after the first sentence, capitalize the first letter of the next sentence. You can put the conjunctive adverb later in the second sentence if you want, like this one. Tim wanted to dance the jive, semicolon. Eileen, however, wanted to dance the polka. But just because we moved it over here to the second word of this sentence, it's still, this is a complete sentence. This is a complete sentence. So the semicolon still has to be used. Or we can just make them two separate sentences and put the period there instead of the semicolon. So there are several variations of how to use conjunctive adverbs. You can use them like this, where you have, sorry, you have a complete sentence and you end that sentence and then you begin the next sentence with the conjunctive adverb. That's fine. More than likely though, this will be the more appropriate way to use a conjunctive adverb. They are most likely used with the semicolon so that those two complete sentences can stay connected in a grammatically correct way. Because you'll note here, my little note on semicolon, a semicolon is used to connect two or more complete sentences. It allows you to keep those two independent thoughts connected in what is technically one single grammatically correct sentence. You cannot use a semicolon unless you have a complete sentence on both sides. This means you cannot use a semicolon to fix a sentence fragment. You'll learn what a sentence fragment is. It basically means it's not complete. So if it's not complete, you can't use a semicolon to attach it to another sentence because you have to have a complete sentence on both sides of a semicolon. Just keep that rule in mind. If you use a semicolon, you must have a complete sentence on both sides, right? They are most often used with these conjunctive adverbs. And you can see we've got a few commonly used conjunctive adverbs on this list as well. Um, however, is probably the most common. 
but also therefore, thus, then, next, nevertheless, furthermore, uh, instead, meanwhile, um, certainly, also, accordingly, similarly, there's a lot of commonly used conjunctive adverbs. You need to remember how they function, how you can use them to keep ideas connected, complete sentences connected, and how they function with a semicolon. Also, don't forget the rules of using semicolons. All right. So I know that was kind of a lot of information to throw at you and, and kind of without context because we haven't actually started looking at these grammar and mechanics errors and how we use those words to help us fix our writing. Um, but hopefully this little refresher will help as you go through the remaining lessons and you hear me say, one way you can fix a run-on sentence is to use a comma with a coordinating conjunction. Oh, that's right. We learned about that in the useful words lesson. And if you need to come back to this, or at least back to the handout, you can, right? Um, but that's why I go through all of these up front uh, before we get into some of the lessons where I refer specifically to these groups of words. I don't in every lesson, but I do in some, some of the important ones. All right, so that's it for useful words. If you have questions, definitely reach out. Otherwise, um, you're free to go ahead and move on to the sentence fragments lessons.